Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. Today I'll be checking out one of the sites more beefier model of their CPU air coolers called Fuma. As you can see, the product box for this model is pretty unique, something that we are used to seeing from them. Going around it, you will find few pictures of the cooler, some technical specifications about it and its fans, a list of compatible CPU sockets, which this model basically covers all, some warranty information, and of course, also your typical overview of main features, like the fact that this is a dual tower CPU air cooler design. Opening up the box, snuggled between the cooler's two towers, we have a small box with all the necessary parts for its installation. Here we have the two 120mm fans. And here is the cooler itself. As I said, Fuma supports your classical twin tower CPU air cooler design, but compared to others, it's actually not that tall, measuring just below 150mm. The aluminum fin design is rather interesting, we have this crisscross pattern, followed up with very cool looking shape of their edges, as you can see it here. Although at first sight this cooler looks like it's not that dense and more hollow, there's actually somewhere in between 45 and 50 fins on each tower. Running through them from this very shiny top of the cooler to the bottom, we have six nickel-plated copper heat pipes which are meeting on the bottom in this also nickel-plated copper CPU base. It's almost polished to perfection, you can basically see your reflection in it. On the top of it you can see that we have this heatsink-like structure, but it also serves as a pin-down point for the crossbar for the socket installation. And finally, for the fans, you will get two 120mm PWM models from their Slipstream series. They have a pretty cool two-tone design and sleeved cables with unfortunately wide headers, while they can ramp up to around 1400 RPM, providing a decent airflow while not being loud during it, as you'll see later on. You can also, if you wish so, install a third one, as the cooler supports it, and as you will get a third set of fan clips for that. Although at first sight installation on an 1151 socket seems to be easy, it's actually not that quite simple. There are a couple of washers which you have to align and screw in while having the outer frame sitting on them, so it can take a while to screw everything in in one take without washers falling from their place or misaligning. After you put and screw in the crossbar as a final step, the cooler still has some wiggle room, although that doesn't affect the performance as it sits on the CPU with enough pressure, but bottom line there is some room for for improvement in this field. RAM clearance is decent, but only if you install it like I did here, with fans facing back I.O. connections, otherwise you'll have to use RAM with lower profile as the fins have a low starting point since the cooler isn't that tall. In terms of the slot clearance, in theory it looks like the first PCI Express slot could be used, but be sure to check if this fan clip is touching the back side of the graphics card, although in case of having a backplate you should be okay. Taking a look at the performance, during idle I was seeing temperatures just a bit above the 25 degrees Celsius mark on my Core i7-6700K with an ambient room temperature of around 21 to 22 degrees Celsius. Putting it under AIDA's system stability test, it was crossing 63 to 65 degrees Celsius at its peak, but most of the time it was under that, anywhere from 50 degrees Celsius, even a bit below, to 60 degrees Celsius. Adding a little bit of overclocking twist to it and bumping the core clock to 4 4.7 GHz with voltage being set at 1.35 in BIOS, I was getting some really good figures. Peaks were mostly around 75 degrees Celsius, but you can see that the roaming temperature is anywhere from 55 to 70 degrees Celsius depending on the core, and those are some really impressive figures for a cooler which can be found for under $50, better than some water cooling all in once, and even some higher end more expensive CPU air coolers out there. Noise wise, the fans are really quiet, barely audible during idle. While under load you can hear them, but they are not as loud as you would think, especially since there is two of them.
that's it guys for this time from me. Thank you once again for checking out the unboxing and review of the Scythe's Fuma CPU air cooler. Feel free to toss me a thumbs up if you like this video, it helps me a lot. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the product. And of course, if you would like to see more content like this, you can subscribe to the Tactic YouTube channel or you can just check out some of my other videos from before.